before it got too dark, I wanted to shoot a quick video. Uh, today, if you've seen, well, I'm not sure when I'm going to get this posted, but if you've seen my tweets today, you know I've been cleaning out the shop. So, here we are as we walk in. Um, nothing too crazy over here. Here's my slide-out drawers. They've been this way forever. There's still piles of insulation before them. And there's my shop vac. One of the big improvements today is you can see my table saw. Ooh. Uh, over here on the right side is where most of the changes occurred. Um, my Rockler tapering jig has been hanging there for a long time. There's my Craig pocket jig. This jig used to hang over back there in the corner on the other side of the cabinets. It got moved over here. Here is my slide-out cabinet that I uh, was lucky enough to be shown in Pop Woodworking this past month, which is the August 11th edition. August uh, 2011 edition, anyway. Here's the slide-out cabinet, anyway. So, it's been slid over. Fitting right next to it, making its video premiere, is the Bastard Tool Cabinet. Uh, still not 100% done, but finished to the point where it can be hung. So now, inside these doors, which are hinged here, kind of see the way that hinge mechanism works. Got a nice piano hinge there. Open them up, and you can see that the inside of the Bastard Cabinet, just a couple planes in there so far. And this plane shelf, lifts up to reveal more storage underneath. Right now a spoke shave, a couple rasps, a rabbit plane. Um, over here on the side, I've, I've come up with in my head a hinge mechanism that's going to fold out to hold this up. I haven't built that yet. The reason for these deep pockets, these are three inch deep pockets, is on the back of the door I want to make removable racks that are going to hold my chisels and on the other door maybe squares of some sort. I'm not 100% sure what's going on the other door. But that's the bastard cabinet, at least finally hung, if not done yet. The uh, hoses and extension cords that used to hang on the sides of this cabinet here have been relegated to the wall down below. I'm still using those cheap hose reels and just hanging them there. Not as ideal, but still fairly, uh, fairly useful in trying to make use of this space. There's my screwdriver, Torx driver, nut driver boxes that used to hang where this cabinet is now and now they've been relegated below. A little less convenient but certainly still functional. Over here I've taken what was my lumber rack and reconfigured it with some shelves to house a bunch of sanders and other Festool toys. Most of these Festools had been basically sitting in a stack right here in the corner since their purchase a few months ago. So now they have a home, if not a permanent home, at least they're up off the floor and kind of out of the way. What you can see here is my, is it Portamate, I think? Uh, yeah. Portamate lumber rack. Um, not a bad deal. I think I got it on sale for like $30 or so, maybe a little more than that. It was cheap enough that I saw it and I said, eh, that's cheap, I'll buy it. And I'm not sure exactly what the cost was. But you can see my lumber there. It's not quite as deep as my previous one was. My previous one was some, I think it's rubber closet made and it was these heavy duty brackets on, you can see here behind the sandpaper, on these heavy duty support, uh, rails, I guess you'd call them, that go on the wall. Anyway, that system worked, and this system works too. I weeded out the, uh, the lumber rack a little bit. You can see I've got a little cherry left over from my Sodas Chronicles build, my timber strand slab, which about two years old now is still nice and flat. I'm rather impressed by it. And just some more lumber up top in the back. You can see some actual treated 1x3. That's for my siding project. Anyway, there's the the uh, the jet air filtration. It really needs to be moved from here over to this side, tighter to the wall. It was kind of in the way today, but moving it by myself is a little bit of an ordeal and just not something I was going to deal with today. As we move back, here's the bench. Uh, the bastard cabinet is off of it. I can see my whole bench now. What you see on the bench right now is a little piece of, I want to say maple, it's home center wood, I'm not sure exactly what it is, it's actually been cut in half and then re rejoined to make it half as long but twice as wide. And what I've been practicing on that board is, um, is Mark's simple varnish, finish simple varnish finish method. So I don't think I can quite get a raking light here, but you can see it's looking pretty good. All I have left is the final uh, buffing which I'm dragging my feet on doing. So I'll do that soon and then what's actually going to happen, this board is going to the office with me and two of these flat panel swing arm mounts are going to go, well one here and one here and this way I can fasten into the studs wherever the studs happen to be I can fasten them at the spacing I want and I can get my monitors off my desk onto the wall and I can get this board off of my bench. 
Uh, so then in this corner, I freed up this space where that stack of Festools has been for the last couple months. That's just won me a little bit more room to, to walk and though I still have a plain toolbox and crap in this corner, I can. it's a little easier to sneak around this bench, which was a royal pain in the butt before. Um, and there's my, over here, we have, still have the Bessie clamps are on the floor. They're going to go up on probably this wall here. I actually, just today I ordered the clamp rack for them. I use these, these are the heavy duty woodpeckers clamp racks. Yes, I know I could build my own, but uh, I got enough stuff on the plate. They're cheap, they're really strong, they're nice, they're easy, and they install in about two minutes. So um, I just bought another one. Um, and that's about it. I don't know if I've captured this on video. This is my dust deputy on what was a 55 gallon drum. I've cut the top now. It's probably about a 50 gallon drum. And the top, this big square that's actually a little hard to see, the square that I made that comes off to expose the whole drum is doubling as a finishing station. And that's all from the wands I just finished. In fact, here is one of the wands. This is the fourth one, which was made in case I screwed up one of the main three. And this wand will be going to my cousin, who wasn't an original recipient, at least not an intended recipient, but I don't need it, and she will get a kick out of it. So this will be going into work with me on Monday and giving to my uncle to give to my cousin. Anyway, so that's the last of the wands. Oh, and this pile here, they're going to be wand stands, because I can't make wands without wand stands. So that project continues, even though the wands have been delivered. Um, and that's about it. Not much has changed on this side of the shop. We got a bucket full of clamps. Someday these will get off the floor and onto the walls. A box full of sanding paraphernalia. Here's some leather I picked up to make a strope. Uh, my glide miner saw. Can't say enough nice stuff about this saw. If you don't have one, buy one. My vacuum boom arm where it doesn't belong. The vacuum boom arm needs to be taken off the wall and put here, mounted to these racks above the bench. I just haven't gotten around to that, even though it's about a 15 minute operation. It actually only s attaches to the wall with some hinges, two hinges. It's actually three screws holding on. But what I need to do is get a piece of plywood or, and take it from here across to there and screw it onto the top to give the boom arm something to mount to. So this is an ideal position for the boom arm, but until the bench gets a more permanent home, that's where the bench is going to stay. So the boom arm should really be above the bench. But, uh, Move on to my joiner, and then my bandsaw and my sheet good storage here, along with this pile back in the corner right here. That's my siding stuff. In fact, here's a piece of PVC trim that that particular bevel cut, and you, it's hard to see on this camera, but the edge is actually flat. It doesn't come to a point, and that's, that's a mock-up I've made that's perfectly fit, so now I need to make two pieces with those angles, and uh, and from there we'll we'll keep trimming out this beautiful window. I just have the top trim left to do. So that's about it for the shop. Just wanted to catch up on what's gone on today, and uh, we'll catch you soon.